Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I did a post not too long ago, I think at the beginning of this week, saying that I was planning on doing a Q&A um, for the end of the week. And if you had any questions, makeup or personal related, then to ask you on there. And I did get some questions, so um, that is what I'm going to do in today's video, just answering some of your questions. Um, I will probably do another one of these, but nearer to Christmas, to do a festive one. So um, look out for a post nearer the time and I'll do that. Anyway. So, the first question was from NK1, and it says, what are your favourite hydrating products? Okay, so I have a couple. So the main one that I like to use before I apply any makeup, anything like that, is this um, In Transit Camera Close-Up from the brand This Works. It's a um, mask, moisturiser and primer in one, and it's a really unusual product, and it's nice to use it on days you're not wearing makeup and when you're wearing makeup. So you put it on like a moisturiser and it's quite a thickish texture and it feels weird because it kind of feels tacky because there's a primer element to it as well. Um, but So if you're going straight in with makeup then that tackiness is perfect. But if you let it soak in for a couple of minutes, your skin feels so, so soft. Now if I've got any dry patches, like around my nose I get quite a lot of dry patches, it just diminishes them and makes everything so much like softer, more hydrated. It's not the texture of it doesn't feel hydrating, if that makes sense. Because um, it feels a bit like a thick cream, like a night, cre night cream, like a night moisturiser. That's the kind of texture. But then it has that tacky element to it when it turns into the primer. I use this nearly every day. Even if I'm going in with makeup, sometimes I'll still go in with another primer. It depends on kind of how long like how long ago I applied this before I then went in my makeup but honestly a really really lovely product and actually the primer that you've seen me often use which I don't have out is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer this again has a weird, weird texture it's, it kind of feels like a gel and you pop it on and it feels this one feels to be in with like it's going to be hydrating because it's kind of wet feeling and then the more you uh, kind of blend in then it gets the tackiness because obviously it is a primer but it's another one that really like, absorbs into skin and it does make the skin feel so hydrated, so soft and so lovely. And I feel like if I'm using these two products, it doesn't really matter what kind of makeup I will put over the top as such, especially with this one. Um, because the base is soft and hydrated that, yeah, nearly any product, unless it doesn't work with the oils on my skin, then it kind of works really nicely and I don't need to do anything else. A few other things I don't have with me is my Hansen Pure Caffeine Bean Eye Cream. That's really nice. I mentioned that before and it just really helps wake up the eyes in the morning. Um, especially if you haven't had much sleep or you had a heavy night, I don't know. But that really like boosts your eyes and makes them feel so much more awake and stuff like that. Because it's got the caffeine in so it kind of just gets things going. Also, some other products I like. So I got a few um, questions about my kind of lips. Well, the lip product I was using before applying lipstick in a few of my videos. Um, so one thing I do love, as I've mentioned before, is the Jane Ardell Sugar and Butter lip product. So it's got a scrub on one end, which looks grim on mine. And then the kind of, it's like a lip balm, but it's got obviously, well I'm wearing it now, a bit of colour and a bit of metallicness to it, which makes the lips really nice, really juicy looking and fuller, but it's very hydrating on the lips. And especially because you've got scrubs, so you can scrub off any dry skin and then go in and hydrate with that. The other product I've been using, which I've been using more before applying um, lipsticks, is a lip oil. It's a Barry M lip oil. Again, I don't have it with me. Now, you can just get clear on this. It does have a hint of red to it, but it doesn't really translate onto the lip. It may give like a bit of a pink tint, but nothing major. But yeah, this is an oil and I love it because it's just really not sticky at all and there's so much movability and yeah it just really hydrates the lips and also because it's got it looks glossy it just makes the lips look a bit fuller as well so i really like that so those are kind of my i guess favorite hydrating products for different parts of the face okay next question is from moonlight and they say hi i would like to know something more about your diet and what you typically eat in a day like breakfast lunch and dinner and and also the second part is do you have any pets okay so in a day I'll, I'm quite bad. Sometimes breakfast I don't always eat. It depends on how much of a hurry I am to get to work. Um, if I do, I might have porridge with water because I don't like it with milk. It tastes disgusting. 
if for some reason Emma and I, so Emma my housemate, is also off for a day, we might treat ourselves to some croissant or something. But usually, um, most of the time I don't have breakfast, um, which is quite bad. Sometimes a slice of toast, but most of the time I'm just hurrying to get to work, which I know is a bad thing, you're supposed to have breakfast, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. Lunch times, it depends if I'm at work or not. So if I'm at work, I have what's available there. So sometimes it could be soup. They do like spice pasta soups in one of phase. Or most of the time I have panini or toasty. So something like a hummus falafel or roasted pepper. Panini is really nice. If I'm not being lazy, then I will take my own lunch to work. So sometimes I make myself wraps, so I get like a spicy bean burger and I fill it with like salad. So I fill a wrap with spicy bean burger, salad, peppers, sriracha sauce. I love spicy food. Me and my housemate Emma love spicy food. Fill it with that and just kind of like typical wrap fillings. But most of the time I forget or I leave it in the fridge. But to be honest, because I work with food, food is available for me at work, so I'll just eat something there. If I've got a day off, then again, if it's a cold day, I will have soup. I typically have a sweet potato and butternut squash soup with the coconut from Tesco. <laughs> That's the one I tend to have, with like a bread roll. Or if we've made a big batch of something the night before, maybe I'll have that for lunch. Or it depends, it's whatever's available in the fridge. We like to try and do different things for dinner. So a typical one that's really easy, that's really tasty, is curries. Like I said, Emma and I love spicy foods. So I will put 15 finger chilies in anything, even if like, so they say like a red Thai curry, even though we're putting the paste in, which has spice obviously to it already, you'll still go ahead and put 15 finger chilies in anyway. And that's a really easy one actually, because it tastes so good, but it's also relatively healthy, because the only kind of bad thing in it, well it's not that bad, is coconut milk. But everything else you can literally, and you can like make it your own, so you can just shove as many vegetables as you want in there and bulk out that way and it tastes so good and especially if it's getting colder right now, it's great. I made a kind of like a Thai noodle soup the other day, which is amazing. Um, so we love spicy foods, I do stuffed pepper sometimes, spicy pasta is one of our favourites to eat. So we always, we do, me and Emma and I do our meals together in the evening just because it saves on time, so she actually does eat meat and stuff um but because of me we just she has everything that i have um and she says she doesn't miss having it she will have it if i'm not there um but it's just easier in terms of pricing we take it in turns each night to cook something so my standards are i get stuffed peppers um <coughs> curries thai noodle soup type things so like last night I made myself risotto and I made a pea and mint risotto, which was really nice. Um, but yeah, but I've had a few questions like that before. So, I mean, I do prefer to do make a things on here. But if you wanted me to actually make something on here, um, then let me know. But yeah, like I said, we like spicy foods a lot. So that's our main key ingredient in any of our dishes. So I hope that was helpful. So if you've got any recommendations for good breakfast things that are quick and easy, just because time is so limited, sometimes in the morning, um, and I'm just a little bit lazy, I guess. I tried doing overnight oats once, but I sometimes I forget to do that in the evening. Oh, and then the pets thing. So we have a family dog, Safi, who's a Border Collie, 10 years old. She obviously lives with her parents. And then my housemate, Emma, as you would have seen, has a nine month old puppy now called Bertie who's a sprolly spring across with a collie who is nuts um and so I don't apart from Safi who's kind of family dog I personally don't have any pets my sister and her husband have a have got a spring spaniel puppy now who's seven months called Albie um so everyone else around me has dogs I don't own a dog I don't have the time to be honest to have a dog and because I live with Emma and Bertie I've got the good side of it so I've got the fun of having a puppy but none of the responsibilities so or none of the financial responsibilities anyway so that's always quite good um so that answers that one this one is from i'm really sorry if i pronounced your name wrong adela pexova says hi i'd like to know what your plans are for the future if there are any like traveling or something like that so at the moment i'm trying to push my bridal makeup stuff so i can kind of do that more i've now got trained in lashes well i'm in the process of training to do lashes so i've actually had the training i just need to do my four case studies and they need to be approved so one case study has been approved which is great i just got to do the other three which i'm actually doing emma's lashes tomorrow um so i'm kind of actually 
going to start going into more of the beauty therapy side of things, I think. So after I've done lashes, I'm going to do brows next. And one thing I'd really love to do, because A, I'm not that knowledgeable, to, knowledgeable, knowledgeable at it, as you probably know as well. I'm not. And also it kind of relates quite nicely when it comes to bridal makeup because I get questions sometimes about it. And that's skincare and skin treatment and learning about ingredients for things, which is something I said I wanted to do at the beginning of the year, which I have not done. So that is one of my goals. In terms of travelling, so kind of my main plans for the future are building up kind of a career for my a self-employed career for myself in the makeup beauty industry. Trying to get the weddings in, doing the bridal makeup and stuff like that, and just makeup in general on people. But also going into the beauty therapy side of that as well. Um, so that's that plan. So that in terms of travelling, um, I haven't really got any plans. Me, so my sister and her husband have been to America a few times and they really want to take me along. And we were going to do it next year. But because um, my sister's job at the moment, she's covering someone tempting someone who's on maternity leave they come back i think in august time of next year so she has to start kind of may time start looking for a, a new job she works in hr um so she says next is probably not a good time she'll be stopping jobs and stuff like that and if i'm trying to kick start my business i don't want to suddenly disappear for two weeks really um so 2021, we're all planning on taking a trip to America. And I'm also very excited about that because I feel like in the US, clean beauty is available in stores. And it just makes life so much easier. I know, like, I don't know if they always do samples in stores, but at least you can go along and swatch things and you kind of get, like, an idea. Whereas you can't really do that in the UK. So sometimes you have to take risks and spend money on stuff you can't feel for. You can't get an idea for, if that makes sense. But, um, yes, yeah, so I'm very excited for that. But apart from that, I haven't really got any travel plans or anything like that. So at the moment, it's kind of building up my career or getting some kind of career. And then potentially going to America 2021. But at the moment, that's my plans for the future. Um, so it says, hi, I wonder what your favourite lipsticks in Green Clean Beauty are. So finishes, brands, shades, thank you. So I'd say... Ooh... Well, that's it. Okay, so if I'm going for a matte lipstick, 100% pure matte lipsticks, I love. My favourite one is definitely Marrakesh, which is a very vibrant, bright one. But I absolutely love Pink Canyon as well. Um, I just think they're nice. They're really smooth and creamy, but they have that matte finish. So they don't feel uncomfortable on the lips at all. And they give the great pigmentation off. And you can still, like... You know, if you, like, move your lips together, you can still have that movability, which I really like. I've kind of gone off liquid lipsticks. I used to love liquid lipsticks, like, matte-wise. And now I've just really gone off them. I actually, and I used to not particularly like glossy lips, and I've kind of gone the other way now a little bit. But I think I definitely prefer a matte finish in a lipstick form. So the Hansen Pure Lipsticks, definitely. Marrakesh is my favourite. But for someone who doesn't like bright colours, then go Pink Canyon. Um, in terms of more glossy ones, I think it's a choice out of two. So I, as you know, I love my Lily Lola ones. They've got the more glossier finish. They've got beautiful colours and things like that. But the one I reach for the most is my Benacost one in pink honey i've only got one shade of that and like because i want to try more shades but something about the formula i just think it gives i think the color is beautiful i think it lasts beautifully throughout the day i don't know there's something about i think it gives more pigmentation and more creaminess than the other lily lola ones i love the lily lola ones as you know and anytime they bring out a new lip product i'm there but i don't know the benicus one is just one that i reach for all the time oh also the jane ardell that's not really a lipstick as such. So, yeah, um, matte formula, I'm going to go home with some pure glossy formula. I think I'm going to better cost pink honey. Obviously paired with the lip liner and brown, because that does look really pretty. Okay, so next one says, I really enjoyed your last Q&A. Could you tell us your best quality and your worst imperfection? P.S. I think you're very talented and you have a beautiful way to promote green beauty. beauty. Thank you. Okay, so my best quality. Um... I think I can name my worst imperfection quite easily. I'm going to take that as like kind of overall and not as in um, physical uh, qualities and stuff like that. Um, if you were meaning that, then let me know and I'll just answer that down below. Um, 
But in terms of like overall, so I say my worst infection is that I don't tell people when I'm annoyed with something or I'm not happy when something's happening. Um, I'm someone who just keeps it quiet quite a lot of the time. Um, unless something really, really has irritated me or done something to upset me, then I'll say that most of the time I don't tell that person. Yeah, I'm very, it's very easy for me just to keep my lip shut and not say anything um, and just pretend that I'm happy with certain things that are happening. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. That's probably one that I do a lot. Um, yeah, and then best quality. I guess I'm a quite good, I'm a good listener. Because like sometimes when Emma come home, comes home from work and she's really stressed out, and she just obviously lets everything out. Then I'll just stand there and I'll just listen to what she say. Sometimes I have a glass of wine ready for her. Um, oh, it's funny because sometimes she texts me saying I've had a stressed it full day. I know that's my cue to go to the shop and grab a bottle of wine ready for the evening. <laughs> um, but I guess, yeah, I'm quite a good listener. I don't really know what my best qualities are. Because I think only someone else can answer that. Because I could be saying, oh, I'm good at listening to people and listening through their problems but then someone else might say well no you're not so I don't know like I think only other people can answer that but yeah my definitely my best my worst infection is the fact that I don't speak up when I'm not happy about something um to that person I just keep my lips shut so yeah that's probably to answer your question I think that's possibly right <laughs> I would want to know what are your favorite foundations so I don't actually often use foundations no, no, no surprise, um, no surprise, because mainly I use my Hint Beauty Concealer as a foundation most of the time. There are, a f to be honest, the only other one that I will use, oh, so I did used to use the Gosh Exceptional Wear Foundation from Superdrug, but to be honest, once that finished, I haven't repurchased it and I'm not planning on to because the Hint Beauty Concealer works for me. I also, um... The Ordinary Serum Foundation, because I got a few questions on that when I wore it in my wish list um, video. That's a really nice one. It's actually one that I have in my kit um, when I'm doing wedding stuff. That along with Illamasqua and a few other things. So I do a great shade range. And this one's really nice because it gives, the serum one is a lightweight formula, but it gives good coverage. So it's slightly better on, in my opinion, on mature skins. It works quite nicely because it doesn't... It's not super heavy and cakey, but it gives the coverage that they might need as well at the same time. Um, so those are the two that I use, the Ordinary Serum Foundation, um, but mainly the Hint Beauty Concealer. Sometimes it's just a concealer or I'll shove it all over as foundation, but um, that's kind of really it for the foundations. Um, oh, and I did really like the Inica Loose Mineral Foundation as well. And the baked one was great for like an extra setting powder, but I haven't repurchased those. Um, and I don't think I'm going to just because, like I said before, I'm so happy with my Hint Beauty Concealer that for now I'm kind of happy with that. Final question is from Nina Kaiser. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, she said, hi Isabella, looking forward to Q&A. My question would be the one about clean beauty, how you handle it, cruelty free, vegan or not, etc. Thank you. So she actually left a comment on my video... Which one was it? Yeah, and she said um, on that one, she said, I hope you don't mind the question, but did you mostly switch back from clean beauty to normal? I really like the look and how it turned out. So, because um, I think in that video, I used a lot more cruelty-free stuff as opposed to my clean beauty, um, especially especially some of the more like regular things I used. So I think like in that one, I actually used the Hourglass Bronzer instead of my Lilo Sculpt and Glow kit, but that was because it's starting to run out. I mean, it's still going strong now, but I didn't want to, until I repurchase it, I didn't want to run out. So the thing with the Clean Beauty, because I heard say a lot of people, they really love it when I try out Clean Beauty and I um, use it and stuff. And actually a lot of my kind of regular makeup routine is consists of Clean Beauty. It's actually mainly like eye products and lip products, so I do switch up between the two. Um, I am, I said, like, I, like I said, at the beginning of the year I wanted to learn more about ingredients in terms of the Clean Beauty and I just have not done that. I've kind of failed on that one. But it is something I'm interested in doing and learning why certain ingredients are bad and stuff like that and I am going forward in my kind of purchases I am thinking more about that so I'm kind of I think is I do have a lot of makeup already uh, which is why I've been saying some videos as well I'm trying to use up some of my old stuff before going ahead and buying new stuff although I've just bought those Ether Beauty palettes which have arrived and I'm very excited to play with um, 
but I, my collect my clean beauty isn't collection isn't that big and that is because uh, like i said before in the uk you can only really get it online so you can't like go into a store and like swipe things to test them out kind of that and shades you can't really test it out and things like that um so sometimes you just have to take the risk and just buy it and hope for the best which is why i don't have a big collection because i can't and it does turn to be more like medium prices as well so the easy beauty palettes are about i think i said 53 pounds i don't think they are i think they're about 48 still quite pricey but it means i just have to stagger out in terms of my finances and budgeting how much i can purchase which is why like you're starting to see old products to be honest the most of my base products i will just stick the same i don't really experiment with that because like i said i love my hint beauty concealer I love my Lilo Sculpt and Glow kit, the illuminators, the blush is really nice, Handsome Pure Blush I really love, and those are kind of the ones that I use the most. Um, so I am kind of, when going forward with uh, re future purchases, I do think about that more. Um, the thing is with like my bridal kit, I can't go fully clean beauty with that. With a lot of things I can, but for example, the Hint Beauty Concealer, I can add to my kit. But it's not good enough because the shade range is very poor um, and I found that with a lot of the clean beauty foundations and stuff like that so that's kind of one product that is hard to kind of add into it because I can't add them in but it's not enough because I need more shade ranges and stuff like that um, the other thing is with the bridal stuff um, people want brands they recognize it sounds bad but people want to know Rec like recognize the brands you're using and they want to see that they're top quality because obviously they're paying for service and they expect they don't want to see like Barry M products in there or elf products I mean the thing is if you use them they'll probably be surprised to think how well they work but they it's a, I think it's a psychological thing they want to see the good brands so in terms of that I've got things like Hourglass, Charlotte Tilbury and Amasca in my kit because they are cruelty free brands um, but they're also they are pricey, kind of mid-tone um, pricing, and they're brands that people recognise. It sounds silly, but that's kind of, some people are kind of, that's how they think. But I have noticed people are more kind of thinking about ingredients and stuff. I think I feel like people are becoming more like, um, wanting to learn about. And with stuff like my special effects stuff, I don't think you can get like a clean beauty version of like liquid latex, spirit gum, um, face paints. You can get them on like cruelty free vegan forms but not clean beauty because they have got the chemicals in needed for them to do what they need to do sort of thing. Um, so I could never say I am fully clean beauty. I only use clean beauty which even though like on my regular makeup I could quite easily do. And for the most part I do. But I, feel, I would feel a bit hypocritical because obviously stuff like that. I don't use uh, and like I said before like it it's not the most accessible thing either so that's why I have to like stagger out what I can buy and something has to really grab my attention but I'm also doing it with a kind of just conventional makeup that's cruelty free as well I've stopped buying a lot when I first started doing makeup I used to spend so much money on makeup I still kind of do now but it's more on on better quality stuff and stag it out if that makes sense so going forward i'm definitely thinking of buying more clean beauty stuff being more kind of um thinking more about the ingredients and stuff like that um but obviously i'm not going to chuck everything that i've got in my um draw away that isn't clean beauty so that's why i am just kind of using them up and then when they're used up i probably won't repurchase my other problem is sometimes i'll go into a place like Superdrug, i'll look around and then like a palette will grab my eye and i just fall in love with it so i saw the patricia lights and a patricia bright um rich in color palette and i saw it and i looked and it looked amazing and it's I mean, it's cruelty free, it's vegan, but obviously it's not clean beauty, but I stared and it just looks gorgeous. I'm drawn into really colourful colours um, for eyeshadows and stuff. Clean beauty doesn't always have that. I found it with the Silk Naturals, but I have to get them shipped over from America and there's custom charges and all sorts. Um, actually, blues, greens and purples, which are my favourites, seem to not be a problem. Because I seem to find lots of that within the clean beauty um, stuff, which I love. But some of the other fun colours, not so much. Which I know, like, 
that's not the point. It, clean beauty is about learning about the ingredients. It's about understanding what's bad for your skin and your body and stuff like that. But I do love playing with makeup as well. So I do like the variety of colours. But having said that, I am going to learn more about the ingredients and I am going to um, think about future purchases more wisely and stuff like that. Oh, something to note, the Kosas 10 second eyeshadow, I only found them, they are now in the UK. But I think it's a very, very recent thing because they weren't before. So I'm tempted to pick one up. Um, but sometimes I just genuine, genuinely get drawn into stuff um, and things like that. And like I said, sometimes like Makeup Revolution, Cruelty Free and Vegan, and it's inexpensive and I can go to town and grab it if I really wanted to. Not saying that's necessarily a good thing, but in comparison to some clean beauty stuff, unless it comes to stores where you can go in and swatch, swatch things and test it out, it does make it just a little bit more difficult. Not everywhere does samples as well, um, which again is another problem. So, hence why I only I don't have a big collection of clean beauty because I have to just stagger out my pro, my purchases because I still need to be able to afford rent and bills <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, so um, I don't know if that answers your question. Actually, I will say having switched to Him Beauty Concealer. My skin has done so much better now. I still get the old breakup. Oh, I've got a massive spot right here on my lip. But it tends to be around the time of the month, which makes sense anyway. But in general, my skin has definitely gotten a lot better. And that's because I use things, I think, like the Hint Beauty Concealer. Well, I don't know why I always find that like a weird question to answer. Because I feel like a lot of people take the clean beauty world seriously. And people might think that I'm just using it for fun whereas I mean I am because I'm playing makeup but I honestly do want to learn more about it and stuff like that so just let me know down below let me know if you what you think about my answer let me know kind of your recommendations advice opinions everything along those lines um but I hope that was interesting so that's actually the last question I purposely made that the last question because I knew it was gonna be a lengthy answer um but yeah I would definitely be doing another Q&A around Christmas time make it more festive and fun and stuff like that and I hope you enjoy the next couple of videos because I know it's going to be the Amethyst palette which I have actually down here ready to go um, so yeah stay tuned for that and yeah if you've got any qu more questions just leave them down below and I'll try and answer them um, and yeah I hope you enjoyed the video so thank you so much for watching leave any requests for future videos down below and I'll see you in my next video bye